All right. Well, thank you for being here for the Grow Your Business Without Guilt training. I am your host, Katie Horner. My assistant, Tressa, is on here as well. Now, uh, as we get started, I just want to welcome you again. This is our training on how to grow your business without guilt. And I'm going to be sharing five principles with, uh, with you to sharing from our five principles with you today. And uh, before we get started officially, though, I want to start with a word of prayer. That's what we do with all of our trainings here at the Flamingo Advantage. And so let's take a moment and just ask God for his guidance and his blessings on this time. Lord, thank you so much for your goodness to us. Thank you for bringing us together as brothers and sisters in Christ in this moment to be able to learn from you how to go forth with the confidence of what you've placed in our hands and equipped us to do for the people who need you in this world. Thank you for allowing us to do these things, for living our purpose in a way that also provides for us and provides to further the work that you want to do. I just pray that you would help us to see business as you see it and see your people as you see them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Now, I'm guessing for a lot of you, this is probably not your first business training. Uh, I hope it's not your last business training with us. And the first thing I want to mention is that if it feels like you've failed at, or are failing at growing your business in the past or up until now, it's probably not, that feeling is probably not your fault. It's probably not coming from you. All right. We have an enemy of our souls out there who does not like for us to be successful. And there's a lot of information out there that can be confusing. Uh, many times it's information overload that will keep us from feeling successful in taking action. And so if you've been concerned in the past that you just can't seem to succeed with your business, I want to help you put those fears to rest. Because I believe that if God has called you to this, you can do this. You just need the right information and support to make it happen. The fancy business coaches out there in the world want you to think that you need venture capital or you need a fancy college degree or you need a high rise office or a specific software or funnel method in order for you to be successful in business. And I'm here to tell you they're not right. They have their own reasons for wanting you to think that. But if we do business by the book, it's not true. Because 1 Thessalonians 5.24 says, faithful is he that calls you who also will do it. And so if you've ever thought that the world wants you to fail, that the banking systems want you to fail, that the naysayers in your life want you to fail, you're probably right because they don't benefit from you succeeding. The devil wants to keep you poor, dumb, weak, hopeless, indentured. Our system wants to keep you fearful and in debt and in need because when you are, then you obey the humans in charge and not God. The difference with us here and what I'm teaching you tonight is that we care about your success and want to see you running a business that supports your life and your God-given purpose. And yes, we'll help we'll, to see you making money along the way, right? We want you to listen to God first to make decisions confidently based on his leading, his principles first, not to make decisions out of worldly fear or worldly pressure. That's what we're here for. And I know that you have a dream to make more money, which is fine, by the way, totally legit to start a business or have a business because you want or need more money. That was our initial motivation when we first started. But I believe that if you're honest with yourself, you have dreams for more. You have dreams about changing someone's world, making an impact bigger than yourself. And I want you to show you during our time today how that, that can be a reality when we go from the mindset of going away from guilt and getting in alignment with our God. My goal for this presentation is to help two types of people. For those of you who are striving for success and feeling guilty about not yet attaining it, or not being better yet, I want to fill you with the hope and truth from God's word so that you can continue to do his work with joy. And if you're here and you're feeling somewhat successful, but you feel like you were meant for more, I want to show you how to get there too. You may be feeling guilty over being successful or guilty for not being as successful as you desired. You see how the enemy uses it both ways? And that is keeping you from enjoying what God is doing in you and what you're doing for him in the kingdom. I want to shift that mindset. I want to bring you back to truth today. That truth that will set you free 
to keep growing and doing those amazing things for the kingdom through your business. As Christians in the business world, I think that many of us feel this, this tension between doing business for God or doing business with God. And for a long time, I struggled with guilt over that. Guilt over the time I spent in my business instead of in ministry work or with the family. There's guilt for charging for my services. I had guilt for spending to grow the business when my family had needs as well. I had guilt that was projected from others onto me about not being proud of my abilities or not being proud to share what I could to do for my clients. But when I realized that God delights in my business and my success, that he created me for this work, that provision is power to grow his work and that my purpose fits in with his bigger purpose, everything changed. I believe that the only way we can exponentially grow our business sales and our business impact is to know the truth and to act on the truth. And the best way to know the truth is to immerse yourself in him and to surround yourself with those who also do that and support you in doing it too. A lot of us are, are bearing unnecessary guilt because of who we're hanging out with. When my husband and I decided to start our first business, it was back in 2010. We were dirt poor missionaries living in Mexico purely on month to month donations. And I can laugh about it now, but it was not fun. We barely had enough most, most months to, to make do, much less extra to spend. You know, they say those months where there's more month left at the end of the money, right? That was us all the time. We didn't have any savings, no credit cards. We didn't have anybody willing to loan us money to start a business with. And we had a skewed view of our God. You see, everybody who knew us as ministry workers were upset with us that we would consider going into business. They saw it as a betrayal of sorts. The people that we looked up to as Christian leaders and mentors began to shame us for not trusting God enough to provide through donation support. Our Christian community shamed us for taking time away from ministry and what they saw as an equivalent to turning our back on what God had called us to do. They shamed us for talking about how our giftings could help other people through our business efforts. And in our minds, this may as well have been coming from God because these were the ministry leaders and the mentors and the loved ones that we had looked up to and learned from for years, the people who had trained us in ministry. But something shifted the day that our family took a trip to see flamingos in the wild. We, uh, again, living in Mexico still as, as missionaries, trying to get this business off the ground, we decide to go out into the wild and see flamingos where they migrate here in Mexico. And when I saw those flamingos for the first time, God showed me something powerful. He revealed that I am much like a flamingo. Uniquely designed, bold, colorful, created on purpose for a specific job in his kingdom. Because just like those birds, we as Christians in a secular marketplace are meant to stand out. Flamingos are pink in the middle of an entire atmosphere that is only blue and green and brown. And they stand out. And they're not ashamed of it. It's on purpose. It's an on purpose design. And when I understood that God meant for me to stand out, that God meant for me to have a uniqueness that drew people to me, just like I was drawn to those birds, I understood that I could embrace the work that he had qualified me and trained me to do in the world around me. And that I could do it in a company of other people who were just as outlandish as I was in standing in their purpose and be effective. This is what the concept is of doing business with God rather than just for him. And that's how it all became more clear for me. Some of you listening to me right now may feel this same sort of tension. You love God, you want to grow your business, and yet there's this guilt that creeps in. This feeling that you're not doing enough for God because you're focused on secular work 
or you're taking time for that. And maybe it's taking time away from, or you believe that it's taking time away from other things. What if I told you that growing a business can actually be a sacred calling? Just as sacred as ministry. What if selling the result that you sell in your business? What if selling the product that you sell in your business is a sacred duty, a sacred service to those who need that result and that transformation? I believe that God often provides ministry opportunities through business. And I believe that he's glorified when you fulfill his purpose for you in this world. My husband and I set records and pioneered new paths with that first business that we created. Eventually, we sold it off, sold off a part of it to one of our team members. When we started business number two in 2014, we've grown that business to be multi six figures. Today, my husband and I own a consulting business that makes six and seven figures from revenue share deals, and we're part owners of two other businesses that do seven figures a year. God provided for us. He provided a historic home that we're still working on restoring. He provided for a trip, a dream trip to Europe for our 20th wedding anniversary. He, he provided for an Airbnb space for us to use as another stream of income and a place of ministry. And recently, God just allowed us the privilege of making one single donation to a ministry we love that totaled more than that entire first year's salary on the mission field. This is what God does when we do business with him. Through it all, we have gotten to shine the light of Jesus into dark meeting rooms and boardrooms and ballrooms and conference halls, witnessing, encouraging, counseling friends, acquaintances, and clients in the process of doing business. We have seen more ministry and more widespread opportunity than we have ever dreamed could come through business. And if God can show himself to us, if he can change our mindset around guilt and money and service and grow us so incredibly, I have no doubt that he can do it for you too. Now, you may not have a history of ministry. You may not have ever lived in another country, but here's how I know that knowing your God and doing business with him still applies to you, whatever the circumstance you're coming from. Because when you know your God as the creator, the designer, the provider, the all sovereign and all good God who put you here on purpose for his purpose to shine his light into the world, you begin to see business as an incredible tool with which to serve him. It's no longer just about making money, but he gives you a vision for the impact that is possible through doing business. I like to say that God is the owner of my business and that I am his CEO. And therefore, if I want to keep my job as CEO and continue to enjoy the benefits of the position of CEO, I don't need to worry about what anyone but the owner desires of me. I don't need to worry about what anyone but the owner thinks of me and the work that I get to do on his behalf. Not only has this been true in my life, but it's also been true in the lives of our clients. One of our clients' name is Jean, and she and her husband are now working together. He was laid off from his job last fall, and in February, they decided that he was going to come join her in her business of serving teens and young adults. And they went from barely making ends meet in February to July being their biggest month ever because they were walking together with God and applying the five D's to their business. And so today I want to share with you three of those five D principles that God has shown me about how to grow your business without guilt and for his glory. And I'm going to break these down into the three key secrets that are going to completely change the way that you do your business. So in the next 30 minutes, here's what we're going to cover. God's design for your business. That's the first D. How knowing God decreases guilt and increases confidence. God's design for your business. Number two, we're going to talk about how to delight in your relationship 
with the owner of your business. Because when you delight in him, it increases your joy, your productivity, and your results. And then finally, we're going to talk about how delivering with excellence sets you apart and gives you more opportunity for ministry and business. So the first principle that we're going to go into here, and if you have questions as we go through here, please put them in the chat because uh, Tressa is going to help me collect those. And we want to be sure we answer questions as we go. She's also going to be posting the scripture references for you in the chat if you're taking notes. So uh, principle number one is God's design for your business. This first principle means I recognize that my business is God's business and that he designed me for this. My friend, Matt Tommy says that breakthrough is not something you wait for. It is intentional renewing of the mind and a movement of the Holy Spirit that you cooperate with in order to see transformational results in your life and business. You have been divinely designed by God as a person who reflects his image and releases his transformation through everything that you do. However, God can't use your life without one very important thing, your yes. He will not use you against your will. He wants to use you because you said yes, because you want to be used. I used to think that I was the sole owner of my business, that I was responsible for everything. I learned how to design the website. I learned the strategy of sales. I learned how to hire and fire. I learned about how to serve clients better. I was the one paying the bills. I was the one doing the accounting. I was the one making everything work for my business. But God revealed to me through 2 Peter 1, 3, that he has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. And that includes our business. It's his business. He has given us all things. So he's given me this business. It's his business. If it wasn't his, he couldn't have given it. I am simply the steward or the CEO of the business that he entrusted me to manage, to grow for his glory. One of my students named Linda had a restaurant business. And at the time, she felt completely overwhelmed with all the responsibility of being the owner of that business. But after realizing that her business was God's business, not hers, making that mindset shift to think about it differently, she found freedom. And she told me, quote, business with God changed my life, end quote. Our God is a life changer. That is his business. And he wants to continue to change people's lives through the businesses that he entrusts to us. You may be thinking, I built this business from nothing. And yes, you did. But who gave you the ideas? Who gave you the resources and the strength to do it? It was your God. Everything we have comes from him. And so when you see your business as God's business, you will have freedom and peace because it's no longer all on your shoulders. There is huge freedom in realizing this, that it doesn't stop with me. There's someone else in charge. I get to go to him for answers and I don't have to be completely responsible for this without any input from the owner. So I want you to stop right here and just take a moment and write down your biggest aha so far. What's your biggest aha from recognizing God is the owner of the business? You're welcome to share it in the chat if you want to. You don't have to. But at least write it down. What is God showing you already? All right. Are we ready, ready for principle number two? Okay. Principle number two. Here we go. Delight in the relationship with the owner. Delight in the relationship with the owner. The second principle is 
talks about our, our relationship with God. And here's how I came to this truth. For years, I operated with the mindset that success in business meant hustle and grind, that it depended on me. And it's not true. There are so many people out there, coaches and business uh, business people teaching that you have to hustle, you have to grind, you like your success is only about you. And that is not true. Psalm 37, four says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. And when I think about that and how it applies to business, I shifted my focus from hustle to delight, delighting in him and things fell into place. Proverbs 16, three says, commit your works unto the Lord and your thoughts will be established. Committing those works to him so that our thoughts about the business, about the work we get to do can be established, can have sure footing. Another one of our clients who also happens to now be one of our facilitators in our business with God program, her name is Kathy. And she shared with me once that her biggest aha moment was when she realized that she had been doing business for God, not with him. And she said, now her business is flourishing because she delights in God every step of the way. Some of you may think that business is all about pushing hard to succeed. It's all about meeting those KPIs. It's all about how much profit in the bank and bigger profit margins all the time, right? But God says, delight in me first. First Corinthians 10 31, whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. That whatsoever you do means your business. So let's read it again. First Corinthians 10 31, whether therefore you eat or drink or do business, do all to the glory of God. Matthew 6 33 says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these other things are going to be added unto you. What are all those other things? What I'm going to eat, what I'm going to wear, the provision that comes through business. Micah 6, 8, what does God require of you? But to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. It doesn't say God requires you to be successful. It doesn't say God requires you to have a million dollar business. It doesn't say God requires you to have a fancy house and a three car garage. It doesn't say God requires any of those things that the world wants you to think equal success. What God requires of you as a person, as a child, as a servant of the Lord most high, is that you act justly in whatever he calls you to do, that you love mercy in whatever he calls you to do, and that you walk humbly with your God in whatever he calls you to do. When you define success by God's rules, when you delight in him, when you act justly, love mercy, walk humbly with him, when you're meditating in his word and doing what he wants you to do on a daily basis, then you will be prosperous and have good success. When you prioritize your relationship with God, he gives desires to you that he can fulfill through you. Let me say that again. When you prioritize your relationship with God, he gives desires to you that he can fulfill through you. Moving on to principle number three, deliver with excellence in order to dominate your niche. Now, before we get hung up on that dominate word, it's used in a positive way in scripture. And that's how I'm using it here as well. The third principle is to deliver your products and services with excellence so that you can dominate your niche as God intended, dominate what he's put in your hands to take control of. For the longest time, I didn't realize that God didn't want me just to survive because ministry life had taught me that I was supposed to sacrifice for Jesus, right? 
I didn't realize that he wanted me to, to thrive, that he wanted to give blessings, that he wanted to prosper us, that he wanted us to have good success in our life and business. But when I went back to Joshua 1.8 and I studied God's word for myself, listen to what Joshua 1.8 says. You shall meditate on this book of the law day and night. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Prosperous and success are not bad words. They are God's promises to us when we follow his ways, when we meditate on him, when we delight in him. That word prosperous is one of the only places in the entire scriptures that the, the, the root word for that actually means financial prosperity. One of our members, Nancy, said that she used to feel like business success was at odds with her faith. But she said, after I embrace the truth that God wants me to be prosperous, I can thrive now because I know that my success is God's success. You may think that success in business is somehow not spiritual or that I can't be spiritual and be a success or I can't be spiritual and be prosperous. But in fact, God created you to be a spiritual being and be successful. And God doesn't make mistakes, my friend. We're the ones who mess it up. We're the ones who think it through too much, overthink it, overcomplicate things. Success starts with him. And when we walk with him and we see our business as a vehicle by which we get to glorify him, a vehicle by which we get to do what he put us here to do, there can be success like no other success. It's all about how you define that term. Well, what about money? Well, I believe money is a tool. It can also be a reward and a resource, but you're not here just to make money. The money you make is a tool to do what God's gifted you a business to be able to do, to be able to give, to be able to impact, to be able to mentor, to be able to witness, to be able to accomplish your God-given purpose in the world. Because I don't think God gave any of us the explicit purpose to just have a business. The business is the tool through which we get to do what he put us here to do. The real purpose to teach about him, the real purpose to show others who he is. We do that through our business. And if your business is broke and in debt, it can't have the money and the resources and the tools to keep doing what God wants you to do. If your business is not making enough profit for you to keep investing and growing it to reach more people, you're not going to reach more people. If you're giving things away at the expense of the business, you're giving things away and depleting your resources, how are you going to have the money to be able to invest in that place where God wants you in the room for the right opportunity to speak Jesus to people who need it or to engage in a new partnership to grow this thing and reach even more people? There's nothing wrong with giving things away when God says give, but if you are giving things away at the detriment of the business that he gave you to steward and grow for his glory, there's something wrong. And so replacing this belief with the fact that God and his purpose for your business allows you to deliver with excellence. And when you deliver with excellence, people will be drawn to you. They will want to buy from you because you give better customer service, because you have a better product, because you keep your word, because you treat people well. Delivering with excellence allows you to dominate the niche that you're in by becoming the best preference of the people who are making their choices known with their buying power. And by doing that, you fulfill a mandate that God gave you to do all to the glory of God. It glorifies him when we do our business with excellence. And so I hope you can see how these three principles can give you clarity can give you encouragement. And I hope that they, you will take them to heart as I have over and over through the years. Take another minute right now and, and write down what's the biggest aha you've gotten from this so far.
What is it that you're noticing? What is God bringing up for you? What does he want you to change based on what you've heard tonight? These three principles are just the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more where this came from. God talks so much about business and financial prosperity and planning for the future and taking care of the things that he puts in our hands. And at this point, you might be thinking, I have never heard anyone, Katie, talk about business and walking with God in this way. How do I go deeper in applying these truths to my business and my life? I don't believe that any of us in our business should walk away from that question without serving the people who want more. And so would it be okay with you if I share a way for you to learn how to do that? Yes, thank you. All right, so I would love to invite you all to our Business with God membership. This is a community that I've created for Christians in business where we get to offer not just marketing and business strategies, but the biblical principles behind them so that you're learning what works in today's market and it's coupled with what God says and what that means for you as you walk out his plan for you through business in a secular world. Our Bible-based coaching gives you up-to-date advice on what's working in the market I spend thousands and thousands of dollars every year to be in some of the highest marketing rooms and conversations and be able to bring that information back to the business owners in our program so you can be up to date on what's working in the market. But then we teach it through the lens of what's the biblical principle that backs this up. Does it hold water against what scripture says? And I believe that you can't possibly know what questions to ask to get to the next level if you're not at that level yet. That's why I go to these places and I join programs like this because I don't know, I'm not at that level yet. I don't know what questions to ask, but when I put myself in a room with people who are at those levels higher than me and I listen to the questions they're asking, then I know what I need to work for to level up. I'm not there yet. You may not be either. And so we, I believe we need to surround ourselves and be in the room with folks a few steps ahead to be able to hear the questions they're asking so we can keep learning and growing and leveling up what we're doing to steward the business God has given us. In the Business with God membership, we also have live monthly trainings on current topics that are moving the needle and helping you grow your business results. And these, again, often come from those conversations or the presentations that I'm hearing in some of those rooms where I'm attending. We have monthly prayer calls where you get to get together with other Christians in business and pray specifically for one another's business needs. How, when was the last time you got together with someone to pray over your business? We do that on a regular basis. We have uh, extra study resources that we provide. Uh, things like how to create a sales page that converts. Things like... Um, marketing marketing books and templates for email sequences and things like that that we provide to our members. So here's what you get when you join. There's six weeks of a foundational Bible study, Bible-based Bible study. It's, it's Bible and it's business, but it's all from scripture. And you get to do th work through this on your own time as you wish during the first six weeks. Get grounded in God's design for your business. It's optional, but it's highly recommended. And everyone who's gone through it has loved it. It's something we've done for the last like seven years. And we've included it in this membership. Then we have our live monthly coaching calls where you get real-time feedback from me. We have our prayer meetings where we pray over our business together and get to know the other business owners in the group. We have our monthly marketing trainings where I'm teaching you how to put things into practice tactically, like what to actually go home and do to grow your business. And then we have a private Facebook group for networking and ongoing support throughout people sharing wins and prayer requests, asking questions and getting answers in there and a few other surprises along the way. I know some of you may be thinking, I don't know if I've got time. 
I think if you're serious about growing your business with God, you can't afford not to take the time. We can't afford not to take the time for prayer, not to take the time to keep investing in ourselves and growing what we can do. Business with God is a one hour a week commitment to the group. One hour a week that we meet live together. The rest of the time is totally up to you and what you want to put into it. You say, I don't have the money. This is not a 10K consulting package. It's not a $500 a month group. It's not even a $500 coaching call. Though you do get the opportunity to get coached every month in our laser coaching. Doing business with God membership is a $97 a month investment. It's the same as two dinners out in a lot of states. And it's month to month. There's no long-term commitment. It's not a cost that is gone and down the tubes like a drink of coffee. It's an investment that multiplies as you and your business grow because of it. You might be thinking, I've tried other programs before and they didn't work. And I think this is different because this one's not just about business. The Business with God membership we've created intentionally to be about aligning with God's plan for our life and growing our business. Based on human knowledge alone, we fail. We must incorporate that walk with God, the meditation on his word, the principles to interpret and apply the worldly knowledge in a way that works. You don't get that in other memberships. We start every one of our weekly calls, just like we started this tonight with a word of prayer. And we also recite the principles from God's word for how to grow a business that glorifies him. If we want truth and power in our lives, we have to live and work connected to it. No other business program out there does it the way that we do. Some of you think, well, my spouse won't like this. Maybe my spouse doesn't want me spending more money. Well, they can come too. Invite them to come with you. Invite them to jump in and do this with you. We have a two-for-one policy in our membership so that you and your spouse, as long as you are living together, working together, you're paying joint taxes, right? They can come with you. You join as a one flesh team. If you're not married, but you've got a legal business partner, that business partner is invited to join with you, okay? I want you to do this together because I believe that as my husband and I have grown our business together, that under the mutual understanding of what we're learning and the mutual communication is huge for helping you to grow this thing. And try it out. Like I said, there's no long-term commitment. It's a month-to-month -month membership. So you can literally try it out and see what you think. I always encourage people when you're trying something new, go all in for 90 days. Give yourself a time limit for we're gonna we're gonna put everything into making this work for this amount of time and then we're gonna evaluate. If you do that with this, I can guarantee you're gonna see a benefit. Some of you said, well, my spouse doesn't support me. They wouldn't want to be involved. Well, then my friend, you of all people need this program. If you're not getting that support at home, let us be the support. I know what it's like to be isolated and have nobody to talk to about that understands the business or my motivation for impacting the world through the gifts God has given me. I've been there and it almost killed me. You need a support system. Let us be that for you. My family thinks I'm crazy. They belittle my efforts. If you're getting that criticism and that guilt, poured onto you from the people around you, then please let this be your safe place for support and for encouragement. We can be that for you. I just had a client on a call today say something along the lines of, I've just realized that I need to not talk business with this group of people because they keep pulling me down. This is a place where you can talk business, where you can ask your questions, it's for any believer who's running a business and you're making anywhere from a few thousand dollars a year to a million dollars a year, right? We've got people of all different sizes of businesses in here so that you can learn from those further ahead and help those further behind. It's a community. It's for online businesses with digital products. It's for offline businesses with physical products. It's for service and coaching type businesses. What brings us together is the fact that we all need to know our God and do business his way, to have the support of others who understand the values that we have, 
who won't make fun of us for making a decision based on the spirit's leading and who understand what we're doing and the marketing language that we're speaking. It's a community where there are no dumb questions. Nobody gets discouraged or picked on. We lean on each other for wisdom and expertise because we know that we all are doing this because we want to glorify God. Yes, we want to make money, but we believe that the business is the way God is choosing to provide for our family and we want to grow it for his glory. A lot of people take a free training like this one today and they think, oh, that was awesome. Now let me go take this and figure it out on my own. And it'll take you longer, but it's fine if you want to do that. But I know that there's also people watching this who will want to invest in your own growth and a business that you can grow in a way that allows you to confidently move forward faster. How do I know God wants me to do this, you ask? How do I know? A lot of us get frozen in that like, oh, is it really God or is it something that I'm wanting? I just had this question recently. And my answer came from Proverbs 16, 8 and 9. This is better as a little with righteousness than great revenues without right. A man's heart devises his way, but the Lord directs his steps. And so I believe when we're making decisions like this for where to invest for our business or who to learn from or who to partner with, that we need to take the wisdom that God has given us. A man's heart devises his way. What does he put in your heart to do? Are you walking with him and delighting with him? Then you can be confident that the desires he puts in you are desires he wants to fulfill through you. And so listen to that heart, plan your way, devise your way, and then submit it to the Lord's steps. So let him direct Lord. And, and, um, this is a, a great way to do it. Lord, with the wisdom I have, with the knowledge I have, I believe this is the best option I've got and I'm going to go for it unless you tell me otherwise. I believe that that verse is telling us that we can walk with God in righteousness, surrounded by others who are also walking with God within a world. And we can prosper when God directs our steps. Walking with God is better than walking with the world. We don't want to get rich unethically. We want to prosper in a way that brings glory to God and allows us to have a bigger impact for him. And again, um, I, that scripture goes on to say, you devise your way, you plan your way, and then you let God direct the steps. God's direction can come from his word, from his spirit, from him putting people and circumstances in your path. But if you're not walking with him, if you're not surrounding yourself with people who encourage you to walk with him, encourage you to do what he's calling you to do, how are you going to even recognize him? I am so confident that a membership like this is going to transform the way that you see business, that you think about business, the way that you do business, that this, I want you to, I want to invite you to think about this as like a 30 day trial. If you join and you don't see it, that it's a right fit within 30 days, just cancel and go on your way. No hard feelings. And you may have made a friend in the meantime. But what I believe is going to happen is that you will find a truth here that is empowering and a community here that is invaluable and a support here that gives industry insights and is going to keep you growing well beyond the investment that you're making. I fully expect you to say that this was worth so much more. And if you want even more than that, if you've got a bigger budget or a, a, a faster need of growth and you're willing to invest in that, then uh, I invite you to email me, katie at theflamingoadvantage.com and let's talk about what it might look like to work together in a one-on-one -on -one situation. But right now, we're opening up that registration for the next cohort of members in the Business with God membership. Between now and the end of the month, we're taking new people in so that if you're feeling that nudge, now's the time to act. You can go over to businesswithgod.online and join us for just that $97 30-day trial. And let's start growing your business with God for his glory and without guilt. You can do this. He's put you here for this time in history. To do what you do for the people who so desperately need your message and your help. And we can help you do it.
businesswithgod.online. Thank you, Tressa. She just put that in the chat for you. If this, if all this membership did was help you get grounded in the word, give you that six week devotional Bible study so that your relationship grew with God, would it be worth $97? And if all it did was give you confidence and knowledge so you could market your products and services com more competitively in this noisy, crazy world, would it be worth $97? And if all it did was give you access to the top marketing knowledge of today with tool suggestions and Im implementation suggestions for how to improve the way that you market and market your business and reach your people and how to make better sales, it'd be worth so much more than $97. But you're getting all of that and a community of friends and brothers and sisters in Christ for a fraction of the cost of what enrolling in a secular business coaching program could be. In fact, I just signed a client last weekend for $10,000 for two weeks because we can get him a bigger ROI than he could get on his own. And it's only going to take us two weeks. He's going to make that investment back in spades. And his team, after we had our first call yesterday, one of his team members told me, she said, oh my goodness. We are so grateful for this expertise. We're going to be so much more organized and effective to reach so many more people now. But what about you? Anything you do from here on out has a cost. Ask yourself, what is it going to cost me to continue to go on my own? Do I have that much time? Do I want to lose what could be gained in that time? Or can I make an investment that will return greater and faster and more impactful returns? I have a bonus for you if you sign up today while we're, while we're on this call. We have a three-day Christian marketing training that we recorded last year with a live audience. It teaches you how to build a list, how to narrow down your messaging so you can communicate better through your organic or your paid traffic and a whole lot more, but this event alone is worth over three, $300. And we're going to give it to you. If you join today, it's a, called a fast action bonus for those that take action quickly. I don't want you to wait. I want you to join us in the business with God membership and start growing that business with God without guilt. Go to businesswithgod.online. There's more details there. You can um, sign up there. You can be with us at our very next call on Tuesday and we'll welcome you in. So I'm going to end here of the, the official part of this and just say thank you for being here today and for listening, for letting God speak to you. And by the way, take those scripture passages and go look them up on your own. Don't just say Katie said, and go back to God's word and find out for yourself what God says. Right. But I'm so grateful that you took the time to do this and invest in yourself tonight. And I can't wait to welcome you into our community. I'm going to stop there uh, officially for recording sake, but I'm going to stick around another 10 more minutes. If anybody has a question or you'd like to share a takeaway, uh, I'd love to love to hear what you have to say and answer any questions that we have.